hi guys welcome back today we are going to take a look at uh, i2c communication and uh, we will learn uh, about uh, i2c communication protocols and uh, uh, let's get started so i2c communication uh, is basically a serial communication and uh, in nrf devices uh, we have a twi which stands for two wire interface which is basically similar and uh, is compatible to i2c communication so i2c communication was uh, designed by philips uh, which is now an xp so twi is uh, similar to i2c and uh, has the basic compatibility with i2c uh, i2c can be said as i square c or uh, i2c and it's abbreviated as uh, inter ic or inter integrated circuit uh, bus basically it's a serial communication and it needs two wires uh, to support uh, the communication so uh, the TWI in our NRF devices uh, has uh, this I2C compatibility and uh, it can support uh, 100 kilohertz and 400 kilohertz modes only uh, whereas uh, in normal I2C we can uh, go uh, as fast as uh, 1000 kilohertz and uh, uh, sometimes uh, we can even use a uh, high speed which is uh, specially used for high speed communication uh, with the new and advanced advanced devices so nrf52832 and nrf52840 they support 100 kilohertz and 400 kilohertz modes only uh, i2c uh, communication is uh, a little different than uh, serial communication that we previously used which is called uart and if you are used to of uh, using uart uh, in the uart communication we have a parity bit then we have uh, data bits and uh, uh, we we can just set the baud rate and we can communicate uh, but uh, here in the i2c communication uh, we have uh, two wires one wire is used for the clock transmission and the second wire is used for data so uh, in this uh, this communication is basically half duplex instead of uh, full duplex as we have seen previously in uh, uart communication let's see some specifications of i2c communication and uh, uh, it's a serial communication of course I have already mentioned that and it uses two wires uh, one wire is named as SCL which is uh, for the clock signals and another wire is SDA which is uh, for data transmission or receiving and it uses one wire to transmit or receive data so it's a half duplex communication uh, as we have seen in the previous uh, uh, tutorials we used uh, serial communication serial communication is a full duplex communication because it uses a uh, serial and transmission wires separately here we are using just a single wire to transmit and receive data so it's basically a half duplex communication uh, also one thing to mention here this uh, communication is based on the open rain configurations so we have to use the pull-up resistor which will be connected on the both uh, signal wires which are SCL and uh, SDA uh, to put the wires in the high state in open during communication we can just receive uh, zeros and uh, uh, for high level uh, states uh, we use uh, the pull up resistors and these resistors set the wire uh, on the high state so we will use uh, some specific resistors with this communication and uh, the master is responsible for the communication on the bus uh, at the time uh, we can have multiple masters uh, but let's see only one single master in this case and uh, this would be our nrf device so here you can see we have a basic i2c circuit and uh, in this circuit you can see we have a twi which is a two wire interface which is basically i2c communication uh, master and uh, it has a sda line and it has an scl line so uh, we have uh, two lines here and uh, we have connected uh, two resistors and uh, these resistors are connected with 3.3 volts uh, ma make sure you don't connect them with the uh, 5 volts or it's going to uh, burn the pins because uh, in the specification of the pins we have a uh, 3.3 volts so here we have the slave devices and uh, here you can see we have uh, multiple types of slave devices like we have uh, eep rom and uh, then we have uh, some sensors and uh, maybe some other devices as well so we can connect multiple devices on the same bus and we can master can initiate the communication and then master can write uh, the data to these slaves or read data from these slaves so we will see some specif uh, protocol specifications uh, according to which our communication is working 
here is a simple uh, example uh, and uh, we will st see the i2c protocol specifications and uh, let's uh, start uh, from the beginning let's see how a start condition is set and how a stop condition is set so we will learn them one by one so that uh, you are not confused with uh, a lot of stuff because this protocol uses a single wire only so it has a lot of uh, things going on inside it but uh, don't worry it's very easy to implement so in order to start communication between master and slave we need some start and stop conditions so here as you can see uh, the master is always responsible for uh, starting the communication and master is going to stop uh, the communication as well in order to st make a start condition the master will always start the communication and uh, and it's going to send uh, a condition on the bus by transitioning a uh, logic state uh, from high state to low state on the sda pin so here you can see the sda sda line is uh, initially in a high state and uh, the master is going to pull it to low level so it's on uh, zero logic now and uh, this uh, SCL line is on the high state so this is a start condition so whenever we are going to write or read data from uh, the slave devices uh, we will initiate by this start condition once we have a uh, read or write the data from the slave uh, or to the slave uh, we have to stop the communication the master is going to transition the state uh, of uh, sda line from uh, logic 0 to logic 1 and uh, the scl line will be in a high state so this will be the stop condition and this will be the start condition it's really easy and uh, you don't need to worry about it it's automatically handled but uh, i wanted to let you know how it's working internally if you have some faults or some error conditions you can just check around these uh, start and stop conditions on your bus to see if uh, the slave device is working or not the next specifications are acknowledge uh, ac and nac so ac stands for acknowledgement and nac stands for no acknowledgement and uh, in i2c the data is always 8 bits long which is one byte so whenever we are going to transmit like for example if i want to transmit 16 uh, bits of data it's going to be in two bytes and uh, uh, after every eight bytes we are going to receive an acknowledgement signal and uh, if we don't receive that the uh, communication will be stopped by the master because uh, it did not receive any acknowledgement signal from the slave so how is the how this acknowledgement signal is received by the master let's see here you can see uh, the data this is the SCL line and this is the SDA line and uh, once a start condition is set uh, we are transmitting some data for example we have uh, uh, sent for example these are uh, these are the uh, clock signals and upon every clock signal one by a bit is going to be transmitted and uh, once uh, we have transmitted eight bits the ninth on the ninth pulse of the clock the master is waiting uh, for this SDA line to be set to low by the slave device if on the ninth pulse the slave device is going to pull this uh, SDA line to logic low level it means uh, the um, uh, slave device has received these 8 bits and it has given an acknowledgement signal the master is going to read this acknowledgement signal and it's going to continue the transmission if the master does not receive any acknowledgement signal it's uh, going to uh, stop the transmission let's see some other specifications of i2c communication this is uh, something uh, where everybody gets uh, confused a lot uh, this is the addressing of i2c communication so i2c communication is basically uh, based on uh, addressing of the slave devices let's see uh, what types of addresses are available in uh, i2c communication so nrf devices is support 7-bit uh, addressing because they have the twi there is also 10-bit addressing but NRF devices don't support that because uh, they are not fully compatible with the advanced I2C communication they are just uh, compatible uh, just uh, with the basic I2C communication so we are going to see 7-bit addressing and 8-bit addressing so what is 7-bit and 8-bit addressing here so for example uh, my slave device has an address 7-bit uh, address uh, it's going to be this for example my slave device has uh, this address so the first seven bit are going to show the address of my slave device and the eighth bit is going to uh, tell whether uh, i have to write 
on the slave device or I have to read from the slave device. Uh, if uh, you are seeing 8-bit uh, on the data sheet of your slave devices, it's going to be something like this. You will have a different read address and uh, you will have a different write address. But uh, if we use a calculator, we can calculate uh, the 7-bit address from 8-bit addressing. Uh, but just simply just simply turn on the calculator and uh, in your calculator make sure you open the hex and uh, here so for example if I have uh, this uh, slave address 8-bit slave address which is 0x92 uh, what I'm going to do is I will write the 92 and uh, right shift it by 1 and this will give me 49 so this 49 hexadecimal value is basically the 7-bit address so this will be uh, the same for read and write and uh, for the read condition uh, we have to and for the read condition we have to write 1 here and uh, for the write uh, condition we have to write 0 here on the 8 bit so I guess so you have uh, learned uh, something different about the I guess so you have learned something different about the slave devices uh, slave uh, device addressing most of the people get confused with the slave devices uh, on the addressing part uh, because uh, it seems confusing uh, at the first time if you are especially if you are a beginner so since uh, TWI supports 7 bit addressing it means it supports, uh, supports 128 slave devices at the same time which are connected on the same bus uh, but in reality it only supports uh, 112 addresses and uh, other addresses are reserved for special purposes like uh, 10-bit addressing and fast mode and uh, some for some addresses for the future purposes uh, general uh, rule of thumb is if you have uh, a valid range uh, within these uh, uh, addresses like 0x08 to 0x77 in hexadecimal then uh, it's more likely that uh, your slave device has a 7-bit address okay and if it's uh, greater than these addresses then uh, there is a possibility that your slave device address is basically an 8-bit address and you can calculate the 7-bit address from this uh, it's very easy just uh, use the right and left shifting uh, for these purposes uh, to calculate uh, from the 7-bit or to calculate from the 8-bit you have to use uh, 7 and uh, sorry you have to use right shifting or left shifting of the bits okay so uh, the basic communication flow uh, until now we have learned that we have to set a start condition then we have to uh, have a stop condition we need to get the acknowledgement signal and uh, there are addresses so how everything works so let's see it's very simple don't get confused with a lot of information that I have given everything uh, is very easy so once the master starts the communication it will send 7 bit address and the 8 bit is going to be the reading or writing bit so let's see in the real uh, communication for example a master is here and a slave is connected on this side for example and uh, uh, the master is going to initiate the communication by setting the start condition so in the start condition you can see it's going to logic uh, 0 from logic 1 and the SCL is on the logic high state so it gives a start condition so now our communication is started uh, the first seven good, uh, bits are going to be the address of the slave device and the eighth bit is going to uh, tell whether we are going to write into the slave device or we are going to read from the slave device okay and then we are going to receive an acknowledgement signal once we receive this acknowledgement signal we can continue to transmit data now we have the specific device uh, and we are communicating with it all the other devices are going to ignore this data because uh, they don't have this address so now uh, on the first acknowledgement we are going to transmit the first eight bytes uh, first byte of data and then we are going to receive an acknowledgement signal then we will send another byte of data and then we will receive acknowledgement signal and we will continue like this and once we have finished uh, transmitting the data our SDA line here is the actual data and uh, here are the clock signals so upon each uh, clock signal there will be a one bit of data transmission so uh, at the end of this transmission there is just going to be a stop condition and this uh, all I2C transfer uh, procedure will be completed let's see a typical scenario uh, for writing a single byte and reading a single byte burst writing and burst reading 
so there are a lot of sensors which are i2c compatible and uh, we will be using uh, some sensor in the later example today uh, we are just going to see the basic communication and the programming and uh, later on we will see how we can communicate uh, with the sensor in the later tutorial so the sensor have the specific registers and these registers have specific addresses so we read from or write to these registers to acquire data from the sensors so a sensor might have its own uh, central processing unit it can uh, read the data from the external signal lines and then put that data into its internal registers and from those internal registers we are going to read this data so for example let's see how we can uh, transmit one byte of data uh, so for example the, here is my master and here is the slave they are connected uh, via i2c and uh, now my master is going to generate the start condition then it's going to send the address and then it's going to send the write bit which is zero uh, as we have seen previously and for the read we have one so uh, after sending these eight bits uh, the slave is going to set the acknowledgement signal so master is going to know that it has uh, successfully uh, sent the data so now the master is going to send the registers address which is again going to be eight bits and uh, which is one byte and then uh, slave is going to uh, send the acknowledgement signal and then the master is going to send the data which uh, we are going to write into the internal register of the sensor and then we are going to receive an acknowledgement signal and then we will start the communication so this is basically for one byte writing and what if we want to write multiple bytes for the multiple bytes uh, we don't need to write address again and again so for that we have uh, this special bus sequence for example the master wants to write more than one bytes of data so what it does is master initiates the communication uh, with the start condition then master sets uh, the address of the slave and then a write condition then the slave gives an acknowledgement on uh, receiving these eight uh, bits and then the master is going to send the register address on which the master wants to write and uh, the slave device has an internal uh, if uh, these registers are allocated uh, in a sequential way for example register has 0x01 position and uh, the register 2 has 0x02 so uh, the slave device can automatically increment the register addresses once when, when the master is writing the data uh, for example uh, the register 0x01 uh, has eight bits uh, of uh, space the slave is going to receive the acknowledgement and then the master is going to write this data and then slave is going to receive the acknowledgement then slave is going to automatically increment its internal register pointer and then the master is going to write to the second register and uh, this will continue if the registers are in sequence but if they are not in sequence then we have to do it like this and then we have to start initiate another uh, then we have to initiate another uh, write sequence and in which we change the register address so this is the write sequence basically for uh, single byte and multiple bytes and uh, similarly for the read uh, sequence what happens is master is going to start the communication the master is always responsible for initiating and terminating the communication and uh, uh, for example if uh, the master is going to uh, start the communication and uh, the address uh, of the a slave device and then we have the read condition which is a one logic one uh, sorry one bit and uh, then uh, uh, we will receive an acknowledgement from the slave then master is going to write the address of the register where the from which uh, the master wants to read the data and then slave is going to give the acknowledgement signal and then in this uh, step uh, the slave is going to transmit uh, the data uh, of in that register and uh, then master is going to set the acknowledgement signal so the so by this way this is a uh, one byte writing and similarly uh, for the burst sequence of multiple bytes writing the slave is going to uh, slave uh, for example up till this condition it's similar uh, the slave is going to transmit the data and then the master is going to set the acknowledgement signal then slave will send the data and then the master is going to give the acknowledgement signal and it will continue and uh, in i2c communication we can uh, send uh, we can send as many bytes as we want so there is no limit uh, and also the slave can uh, pull the clock to logic low level which will 
uh, say that the slave is busy right now so master will wait until the slave is uh, not busy anymore so in nrf uh, api we will receive uh, an error in communication so let's see the internal architecture of nrf devices so uh, the nrf devices uh, have uh, might have uh, twi m and twi s and uh, simply twi if you are saying twi simply uh, it's uh, for non block it's a blocking mode and we don't really use it uh, we basically use twi m and twi s s is uh, stands for slave if you want your device to be uh, working as a slave then you use twi s and if you are if you want your slave device to be working as a master then you use twi m so here you can see we can set any pins uh, on nrf52832 and nrf52840 they both have a uh, 2 i 2 c uh, in them and uh, twi0 and twi1 so uh, we have an easy dma and uh, what happens is uh, we have some buffers uh, so in the ram memory we will create a buffer and uh, in that buffer we will receive the data or in that buffer we will transmit the data or we can receive the data and the easy dma is going to handle all the communication for us and it's going to be automatic all the acknowledgement signal and everything will be automatic in the api and uh, you don't need to worry about a lot of stuff but uh, what i have taught until now is uh, basically the protocol specifications and uh, they are very uh, important to know uh, when you are using as uh, these uh, this uh, communication uh, and uh, you can use this communication with uh, a lot of uh, sensors and uh, now we are going to see how we are going to communicate with a slave device using our NRF device and we will see the basic programming for that okay guys now we are going to uh, create a new project and uh, in the new project we are going to uh, configure the TWI so first of all let's open this PC and go into the C directory here we have NRF SDK and uh, in NRF SDK uh, go into the examples and then go into the peripherals here we have uh, TWI <coughs> here we have TWI scanner just uh, copy this one and go into my projects paste it here let's open this and uh, I'm going to use the uh, NRF52832 so I'm gonna use PCA10040 if you are using NRF52840 just open PCA10056 so opening this folder blank here go into the SES and then open the EM project file okay once the file is opened let's remove some of the stuff Let's move everything so that you, you can see how it's working. Okay guys, uh, first of all, make sure you have configured it. So go uh, here and open this SDK config.h using CMC's configuration wizard. And once this uh, wizard is open, go into the NRF drivers and here you can see NRFX TWI is opened. We will see NRFX. Uh, as well in the future tutorial right now it's, it's just a basic so in the basic tutorial we are just going to see how this is working and we will just communicate with the device uh, using the TWI or I2C communication so TWI can also be said as I squared C communication it's similar and it's completely compatible with the uh, I2C communication so TWI is basically I squared C so I2C or I square C whatever you want to call it and uh, right now here you can see the TWI should be enabled and uh, uh, here we have already enabled it because we are using this uh, uh, example and in, in this example it's already enabled if you haven't enabled it make sure you enable it I include the drivers as well otherwise it's not going to work so just close this and uh, make sure you have included NRF DRV TWI dot H and uh, also the log files for showing the log output uh, in the terminal so first of all we have the TWI instance 
which is uh, the zero I'm gonna use a sensor which is I square C compatible and uh, it's going to communicate with the I2C uh, it's going to communicate with the sensor and uh, I'm just gonna see if uh, the communication is successful or not in the later uh, tutorial we are going to see all the stuff so first of all let's uh, program this one uh, so we are going to create a static constant Now here I have created the TWI instance and uh, I have given it the ID which is uh, the TWI0 and now I'm just going to configure it so I'm gonna create a function here okay first of all in order to initialize uh, the TWI uh, we have to configure so we are just going to create some configurations and we are going to save them in a structure and then we are going to pass this into the initialization function so okay guys now we have uh, configured our now we have configured our TWI uh, communication and uh, here you can see we have uh, uh, connected uh, tw pin number 22 to SCL and uh, and we have connected uh, pin number 23 to STA and uh, the supported frequency for the NRF uh, devices is 400k uh, but I'm just gonna use a uh, uh, 100k right now we have three options here a uh, 100k uh, 250k and uh, 400 so I'm just gonna use uh, 100 here and uh, intra priority is uh, high in this case uh, because I'm not using any soft device uh, but if you are using the soft device then you have to change the priority the last thing is uh, I uh, set the clear bus initialization signal to false and uh, everything sa is set and good to go and uh, now we are going to initialize it so For this basic demo we are not using any interrupt handler to handle the stuff so let's just uh, put the null here and uh, we have to pass the configurations and also the handle uh, which uh, uh, which is pointing towards uh, uh, instance 0 and uh, here we have uh, the context uh, th here we also have a pointer uh, but we are not going to pass that we will we are just going to pass null here as well and uh, right now we just need to check it and then enable it so right now we are just going to uh, write a simple code in that code we are just going to transmit some data and uh, if uh, we receive any response from the bus uh, from the i2c bus because uh, we are just going to send uh, the data to a specific address and uh, that address would be uh, for my sensor and uh, if uh, the sensor responds it means the communication was successful and the sensor have received this address and uh, the sensor is going to give an acknowledge signal upon receiving the data so we are just going to write a simple code here for that so here I have created two variables and uh, one is going to hold the address uh, this uh, address is for the I2C address of my uh, sensor which is a uh, MPU 6050 and uh, we are just going to communicate with that so the sample data is 0x00 and nothing else so let's see uh, before that let's initialize the logger so that we can see the messages
Okay, now let's give a simple message here for starting the communication or for the start of the application. Now let's initialize it by just calling the initialization function which is this one. I'm just calling that here and now I'm just going to read uh, some data from the sensor and if it's successful from the register uh, from the internal register of the uh, sensor uh, then I'm going to receive a success message and uh, uh, which is uh, basically as we have seen it's uh, just an acknowledgement signal and uh, I will receive that and once we receive that it means we have successfully communicated with the sensor so it's just going it's just going to be a simple code right now everything is finished here so let's test it by just uh, compiling it now I'm just gonna build it hope so I didn't make any mistake here yep it's uh, good to go and it's complete now okay guys the last thing left here to do is we have to flush uh, the logger otherwise it's not going to show the message so I'm just gonna call that function I'm just gonna copy it from here save it let's build it okay guys make sure your device is connected and uh, for, uh, I'm going to introduce this sensor in the next uh, tutorial and uh, this sensor is MPU 6050 and uh, its uh, base address and its uh, I2C address is uh, 0x68 and uh, I'm just communicating with this device uh, this sensor and it's basically a uh, accelerometer and it uh, can sense the acceleration in all the directions and uh, I'm gonna use it uh, with my NRF uh, 52832 and uh, if you have any other sensor just make sure uh, you have its data sheet and uh, make sure uh, you know its correct address like I have uh, uh, previously told how to calculate the real address if you have the 8-bit address otherwise if you have a 7-bit address then it's uh, good to go right now uh, I'm using 60, uh, 0x68 uh, because it's in its data sheet so I'm just gonna connect it so right now the sensor is connected and uh, and I have already told in the slides that we have to connect uh, some resistors uh, right now I don't need any resistor here because uh, on this uh, module I have already got some resistors which are connected with the uh, which are already connected with SD and SCL lines uh, so I don't need to connect any other external resistors uh, for the pull up so this uh, is going to be quite easy for me now and if you are using uh, any sensor and it's not working make sure use pull up resistors with SDA and SCL lines uh, in order to make them work if your device is not working and uh, make sure you put the right address so right now uh, we have uh, finished everything and I put the right address here so if uh, my device responds uh, by just uh, giving the acknowledgement signal uh, then uh, I'm gonna uh, re communicate with this uh, using this address and if uh, the de dev device does not respond then it, it means uh, my communication was not successful so right now uh, I'm just gonna connect with the target it's already connected just uh, raise all and make sure we, you download it yeah it's downloaded now there is one thing left to do we have to connect uh, to the log so that we can see the messages so so just uh, open the putty terminal if you don't have it just download it it's uh, free uh, of charge you can use it so I'm just gonna open this uh, putty terminal go into the serial right now this device is connected with this uh, COM9 and uh, if you want to see which port is connected with your PC just uh, uh, go to this PC and uh, right click here go into the properties go into the device manager 
and here in the device manager if you go to com ports uh, you can see here you are going to see your uh, connected uh, uh, com port so right now it's in a com 9 so I'm just gonna use that and uh, the communication baud rate is 115200 I'm just gonna open this and right now there is no uh, output here because uh, the device uh, has already been programmed I'm just gonna reset it so that we can see it because uh, it's not in the while loop so we are just going to see the messages once I reset it so 3, 2, 1 so here you can see the success we have received this message from the logger that it has successfully uh, communicated with this device and uh, it's on the address 0x68 what if I change the address let's see I'm just gonna change the address to 0x70 to see if it's still working or not build it connect with the target raise all and download it let's see and here you can see the application has started but uh, we haven't seen any uh, detected device message here if even if I reset it you can see we we can see the application started but uh, the device is not responding why the device is not responding this is very simple because the address of the device is not matching so on the port you have to make sure you you are connecting with the right device so right now the correct address for my device is a 0x68 so it's just gonna work and uh, that's it for today and uh, I hope so you guys have learned something new today. If you are new to my channel, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you haven't seen the previous tutorials, you are just landing on this page. Uh, make sure you see my previous tutorials as well to get a better understanding of NRF devices. And they are amazing devices. You can do a lot of stuff with them. And if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments below. And uh, if you want to ask me something uh, personally, you can uh, email me. Uh, the, my email is uh, present in the channel so make sure you go to that email and email me and uh, in the next tutorial we are going to see the details of MPU 6050 and we will see how we can communicate with different sensors I was very busy with my stuff so I couldn't post uh, new videos soon you are going to see more videos so be sure to subscribe to my channel thank you very much guys see you in the next video